I'm sure you've had it. You have a display flex on something, your align items are all working, and then you, you need to justify one item or a couple of items to the right. And not all of them, just one. You want to push it all the way over and you try a justify self because you know you have an align self. So justify self must be a thing. You try it out. It just doesn't work and it sucks. Uh, but there's a reason why justify self doesn't exist within flex. It does exist within grid because grid is very different. But we also don't need justify self because there's a very easy one simple line of CSS that lets you accomplish exactly what you want. Hello, my friend and friends, and welcome back to yet another video. Thank you so much for joining me once again. And if you are new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel, I help you fall madly, deeply in love with CSS. And if not fall in love with it, I hope that I can at least help you be a little bit less frustrated by it. And so let's jump into the code and see how you can be less frustrated with not having justify self. And here you can see I've set up a primary header and the primary header has a display flex with a justify content space between because I want my main navigation on this side. But really what I want is these ones to be in the middle and then these over here. And what we're going to do is let's go over to my index file and here's where my, my actual list is. And we're just going to sort of, you know, I, I don't want to put word wrap on. So let's just because I find word wrap with your HTML, it's kind of messy. Um, so here I have all of these and what I want is log in and sign up to stay on that side. And I want these three to be centered. So on my one right here, this li, I'm going to add a class that's going to be equal to push right. And this is also maybe you even tried floats because you got super frustrated. But when um, items are flex items, you can't use float in there. And actually, we're going to start with that push right on this last one. Um, and then we'll, we'll sort of experiment a little bit with it. So we have a push right. And so let's go over to my style.css here. Um, and there's one more sort of important step here that we're going to have to take. So I actually have my, uh, in this primary header, we're going to do one more thing just so we can see what's really going on. So primary header, and let's just choose all the direct children and give them an outline of two pixels solid. And we'll go with lime green because I think that will stand out. And there we go. So I have this guy here and then I have this green box here. And really what I want to do is the first thing that's really important is that I actually need this navigation to be taking up all the leftover space rather than being squished over here. Because even if we had a justify self, we can't, you know, it is it is all the way at the end, right? It's it, it's pushed over, so it can't push over anymore. And you could always go on your login and add margins to it. And maybe we're gonna do something like that, but you're using magic numbers a little bit there. And we don't wanna be doing that. So ideally what I actually want to do is get this to spread out and take up all that room rather than being squished over on the side here. Um, but because my primary header is using the display flex to actually get everything to be in there and to be separated with my logo and then my primary navigation, which is sort of the standard way of doing things. Uh, what I'm going to do on this is choose my dot. Um, I called it site nav. So that's the, that's this guy here is my site nav. You might be, it's an old demo that I modified a little bit. Uh, to, to work here. So I knew nowadays I'd probably call that primary navigation. Uh, but my site nav, uh, let's just say that this actually has a flex grow of one, first of all. So now it takes up all that space. So now I want now like my sign up actually going over to the right side makes sense. And that hover state is kind of terrible too. Eh? <laughs> it doesn't matter for this. What I want to do is take this disappearing button and I want to push it all the way over to that side. So we have that push right class. Let's try and see what we can do with that push right class. So dot push right. And this is where you might try your justify self flex end because you assume that would work and then it doesn't work and you get frustrated uh, and you don't know what to do. Well, this is an interesting one where you can just say margin left of auto. And there she goes. Uh, and of course, you, this is the same type of thing where you have a margin left and a margin right of auto will center something in the space. And look at that, it does center it within that space. That's kind of cool, right? <laughs> that you can do that. Um, so we can center it within there. But as I said, with just a margin left, it's putting the auto margin. So take all the margin and just put it on the left side. So we can push that sign up all the way over there. Or then I could come onto my index and we could actually change this and move that class over to here instead. And by doing that, now we actually get the login and the sign up both over on that side. Kind of cool, except now my home is stuck here and this looks kind of ugly. Um, and now, you know, right now we have these are actually getting stuck together, which is far from ideal. And that is partially because I had that flex grow on there. So it's just growing to fill all that available space. Uh, so maybe that's not like the ideal solution because of that. So you could put in a gap, but a lot of the time we want this to actually be centered within this entire space. So there are a few different approaches that you could do to that uh, to actually get this to work. 
a little frustratingly with this push, like the, the margin auto, the push right class that we've created. Um, so with this, because of how it's working, we can't actually then play around too much with the justification of our content within here, because uh, it won't actually work. And that's a little bit annoying, but kind of interestingly, we can actually reuse this class again. And this is where things get a bit weird, but on this first LI, I could then come in with, uh, but then on this, so on this first LI, I could come in with a class of, you guessed it, push right, and watch this magic happen. It's now centered within that space. So let's go ahead and turn off uh, those outlines because that's kind of ugly. And there you have it. It's centered within here and here, and these two margins are equal. Um, and the reason that they're equal is because it's an auto margin and it's distributing the empty space equally, even though it's on two different elements. So now we have the equal space, half the margin is going here and half of it's going there at the both margin rights, but it's just equally distributing those spaces. And you could actually get more creative. You can use this vertically as well when you're using Flexbox or Grid to do some interesting things there. And if you'd like this video and you'd like to see other examples of sort of simple CSS behaviors that sometimes we can take advantage of or simple things that cause a lot of frustration that there's reasons for so you can understand CSS a little bit deeper, I have a video that dives into that right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, a really big thank you to my supporters of awesome over on Patreon, Adam, Johnny, Randy, Stuart, and Tim, and of course all my other patrons for their monthly support and until next time don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.